Hare Krishna and good morning. Welcome to the Srimad Bhagavatam class and attentive japa this morning. Thank you for joining. I don't know where a lot of people are today. They're running a bit late and hope they can join a little bit later on. But uh, we should try and make uh, a start. Um, it's a, it's a quite a long prayer and I want to cover it as much as possible. So thank you all for joining. We'll do a quick prayer of our own. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Yay. So this morning we're talking about Parlahat Maharaj or Bhakta Parlad, we say sometimes. <clears throat> he's one of the 12 Mahajans so which means he understands talental knowledge and how to pass it on to the other people <clears throat> he actually tried to preach to demons you know that that really takes uh, some uh, doing you know you can you can uh, preach to people who want the knowledge but trying to preach to demons is a very very different uh, process altogether. So Shri Nasima, Jaya Nasima, Jaya Jaya Nasima Dev, Paladesha Jaya Padma, Mukha Padma Bringa. So all glories to Lord Nasima Dev, all glories, all glories to Lord Nasima Dev, who is the Lord of Parlat Maharaj, and like the honeybee, is always engaged in beholding the Lord's like face of the Goddess of Fortune. So that is our Parlat Maharaj. So just like Dhruva Maharaj, we all know the past time of Parlat Maharaj as well and how his childhood, uh, in his childhood, Lord Narasimha, they appeared to rescue him. So, and uh, after Hirnakashipu was killed by Narasimha Dev, the Lord continued to be very, very angry. So, you know, Lord Narasimha was in a very ogre mood. He was very angry and the demigods headed by Lord Brahma couldn't pacify him. Even Mother Lakshmi, the goddess of fortune, the constant companion of Narayan, couldn't dare come before Lord Nasimha Dev. Then Lord Brahma asked Parlad Maharaj to go forward and pacify the Lord's anger. And Parlad Maharaj, being confident of the affection of his master, Lord Nasimha Dev, was not afraid at all. He very gravely appeared before the Lord's lotus feet and offered him respectful obeisances. And uh, Lord Narasimha Dev, being very much affectionate towards Parlad Maharaj, put his hand on Parlad's head. And because of him being personally touched by the Lord, Parlad Maharaj immediately achieved Brahma Gyan, spiritual knowledge. Thus he offered his prayers to the Lord in full spiritual knowledge and full devotional ecstasy. The instructions given by Parlad Maharaj in the form of prayers are as follows. So just like Dhruva Maharaj was touched by the, the conch of Vishnu, uh, in this case Nasima Dev touched the head of Parlad and they suddenly become, you know, so knowledgeable for their... They were already knowledgeable, but now they like, they know everything, pure Brahm Gyan. So Parlad Maharaj prayed, How is it possible for me, who have been born in a family of Asuras, to offer suitable prayers to satisfy the Supreme Personality of Godhead? Even until now, all the demigods headed by Lord Brahma and all the saintly persons could not satisfy the Lord by streams of excellent words. Although such persons are very qualified, being in the mode of goodness, then what is to be said of me? I am not at all qualified. So although Paladma was a pure exalted Vashna, he thought himself most unqualified to offer praise to the Supreme Lord. Mahajano Yena Gatha Sa Pantha Pure Vashna should should think like this, you know, that we, we are, we, you know, we are unqualified, should always consider unqualified, and yet do your best. One should not be falsely proud of his version of qualification. But Lahad Maharaj continued, one may possess wealth and aristocratic family, beauty, austerity, education, sensory expertise, luster, influence, physical strength, diligence, intelligence, and mystic yoga power. But I think that even by all these qualifications, one cannot satisfy the Supreme Personality of Godhead. 
However, one can satisfy the Lord simply by devotional service. So God doesn't want anything material. Um, everything is given by Him anyway. He just wants our service. Like Gajendra did this and thus the Lord was satisfied with him. No kind of material qualification is the means for satisfying the Supreme Personality of Godhead as stated in Bhagavad Gita. Only by devotional service can the Lord be known and uh, Bhaktiya Maam Abhijanati as it says in Bhagavad Gita unless the Lord is pleased by the service of a devotee the Lord does not reveal himself Naham Prakasha Sarvasya Yoga Maya Samavirtha This is the verdict of all Shastras Neither by speculation nor by material qualifications can one understand or approach the Supreme Personality of Godhead So if a Brahman has all 12 of the Brahminical qualifications and and what is not a but is not a devotee and is averse to the lotus feet of the Lord he is certainly lower than a devotee who is a dog eater but who has dedicated anything so a devotee is considered the highest even though a Brahman with the, his qualifications you know he might have a lot more qualifications but the devotion service is more important his mind, words, activities, wealth and life has to be dedicated to the Lord such a devotee is better than such a Brahman because the devotee can purify his whole family whereas the so-called Brahman in a position of false prestige cannot purify even himself so Paralama says that one of who has been born in the Brahman family but is falsely proud of his prestigious position cannot even purify himself not to speak of his family whereas if a Chandal, a low-born person, is devotee and has fully surrendered onto the lotus feet of the Lord he can purify his entire family so th that is the the most important thing surrender, devotional service you know, these are the key words the Supreme Lord, the Supreme Personality of Godhead is always fully satisfied in himself therefore when something is offered to him the offering by the Lord's mercy is for the benefit of the devotee for the Lord doesn't need service from anyone so even if we are doing service it's for our own benefit We're not benefiting Lord Krishna because he is he has everything okay the service is really for our own purpose for our own advancement to give an example if one's face is decorated the reflection of one's face in a mirror is also seen to be decorated so we automatically our reflection automatically gets decorated by glorifying the Lord constantly the living entity becomes purified in the core of his heart and thus he can understand that he does not belong to the material world but is a spirit soul whose actual activity is to advance in Krishna consciousness so that he may become free from the material clutches that's the thing now therefore, although I was born in a demoniac family, I may without a doubt offer praise to the Lord with full endeavor. So everyone's qualified to offer praise to the Lord. As far as my intelligence allows, so anyone who has been forced by ignorance to enter the material world may be purified of material life if he offer praise to the Lord and hears the Lord's glories. One can understand the Supreme Personality as He is only by devotional service and when one is in full consciousness of the Supreme Lord by such devotion he can enter into the kingdom of God thus Prahlad Maharaj decided to offer his best prayers to the Lord without consideration of his material position O my Lord, all the demigods headed by Lord Brahma are sincere servants of your Lordship who are situated in a transcendental position therefore they are not like us uh, your appearance is in this fearsome form is your pastime for your own pleasure such an incarnation is always meant for the protection and improvement of the universe so Lord Nalsimha there for example appeared for the protection of his devotee such pastimes are those of Nalsimha there are certainly not meant to create a fearful situation for the devotees so you know Lord is not trying to scare anyone only the the enemy but nonetheless the devotees being very simple and faithful were afraid of the fierce incarnation of the Lord therefore Pandal Maharaj in the following prayer requests the Lord to give up his anger 
<coughs> my Lord Narasimha Dev, please therefore cease your anger now that my father, the great demon Hiranyakashipu, has been killed. Since even saintly persons take pleasure in the killing of a scorpion or a snake, all the worlds have achieved great satisfaction because of the death of this demon. Now they are confident of their, their happiness and they will always remember your auspicious incarnation or to be free from fear. So Nursing uh, Hiranyakashipu, you know, he was uh, causing misery for everyone in the three worlds and now they were they got rid of him and everybody you know could now get on with their lives the most important point in this verse is that although saintly person never desire the killing of any living entity they take pleasure in the killing of enemies living entities like snakes and scorpions so this is that was his behavior <coughs> excuse me Hiranyakashipu was killed because he was worse than a snake or a scorpion and therefore everyone was happy now uh, there was no need for the Lord to be angry so he's pacifying ki, uh, now you, you've done what was required now please give up your anger the devotees can always remember the form of Narasimha Dev when they are in danger and therefore the appearance of Narasimha Dev was not at all in its auspicious the Lord's appearance is always worshipable and auspicious for all saint persons and devotees so it doesn't matter you know what form the Lord comes for the devotees is always worshipful and there's no need to fear Lord O most powerful insurmountable Lord who are count, kind to the fallen souls I have been put into the association of demons as a result of my activities and therefore I am very much afraid of my condition of life within this material world when will that moment come when you will call me to the shelter of your Lord's feet which are the ultimate goal for the liberation from conditional life. So everyone is put into conditional life according to his karma. Therefore, Pallad Maharaj, representing all the other conditioned souls like us, admits that he was put into life among the Asuras because of the results of his karma. This, the Lord is known as Karpanya Vatsala because he is extremely kind to the conditioned souls. The Lord is extremely anxious to deliver the conditioned souls and therefore he instructs all of us to return home back to Godhead. So he gives us the solution Sarva Dharma Prathajya Ma Mekam Sharanam Braj. O Great One, O Supreme Lord, because of combination with pleasing and displeasing circumstances and because of separation from them, one is placed in a most regrettable position. Within heavenly or hellish planets, as if burning in a fire of lamentation, although there are many remedies by which to get out of miserable life, any such remedies in the material world are more miserable than the miseries themselves. Therefore, I think that the only remedy is to engage in your service. Kindly instruct me in your service. So, Prahlad Maharaj aspired to engage in the service of the Lord, the Lord and after the death of his father, who was material very opulent, Pallad would have inherited his father's property, who was materially very opulent. And uh, this property extending throughout the world. But Pallad Maharaj was not inclined to accept such material opulence for whether one is in the heavenly or hellish planets or is a rich or poor man's son. Material conditions are everywhere. <clears throat> so just because you have a lot of opulence doesn't you know doesn't necessarily mean that you'll be satisfied or constantly happy. Therefore, no condition of life is at all pleasing. If one wants the uncontaminated pleasure of blissful life, he must engage himself in the transcendental loving service of the Lord if you want to be <clears throat> continuously happy. O oh my Lord Nasima Dev, by engaging in your transcendental loving service in the association of devotees who are liberated souls, I shall become completely uncontaminated by the association of the three modes of material nature and be able to chant the glories of your Lordship who are so dear to me. I shall chant your glories following exactly in the footsteps of Lord Brahma and his disbelief succession. In this way I shall undoubtedly be able to cross the ocean of nations. So by following in the footsteps of the great Acharyas, one associates with the Hamsas and the Prahamsas, Paramhamsas, those who are completely freed from material contamination. 
Now indeed by following the instructions of the Acharyas, one is always free from all material contamination and thus one's life becomes successful. For one reaches the goal of life, this material world is miserable, regardless of one's standard of life, of this is there no doubt, attempts to mitigate the misery of material existence by material methods will never be successful. So Srila Prabhupada mentions this what was in the verse that best to follow the instructions of the great acharyas because trying to solve a material problem with a material solution is not the way. You can't solve material problems with material solutions because it just creates more problems. Material problems have to be solved with spiritual solutions. And that's the only way. Now, my Lord Nasima Dev, O Supreme, o Supreme because of a bodily conception of life, embodied souls neglected and not cared for by you cannot do anything for their betterment. Whatever remedies they accept, although perhaps temporarily beneficial, are certainly impermanent. For example, a father and mother cannot protect their child. A physician and medicine cannot relieve a suffering patient. And a boat on the ocean cannot protect a drowning man. So, I mean, there's no guarantees in life. You know, we, <clears throat> father and mother can't guarantee the child's protection. A doctor can't guarantee saving a patient. And a, even though you're in a boat in the ocean, doesn't mean you, you can't, uh, the boat can go over. So, you know, you know, we're not safe. We're not safe in this material world, basically. <clears throat> so, despite the presence of a father and mother, a child cannot be protected from ex accidental death, disease and various other miseries. Therefore, unless one is protected by the mercy of the Lord, no remedial measures can act effectively. One should consequently depend fully on the causeless mercy of the Lord. Although as a matter of routine duty, one must, of course, accept other remedial measures. No one can protect one who is neglected by the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So, we do what's, what is required, but ultimately we rely on the Lord. <clears throat> My dear Lord, everyone in this world is under the modes of material nature, being influenced by goodness, passion and ignorance. Everyone from the greatest personality, Lord Brahma, down to the small ant, works under the influence of these modes. Therefore, everyone in this material world is influenced by your energy. The cause for which they work, the place where they work, the time when they work, the matter due to which they work, the goal of life they have considered final, and the process for obtaining this goal. This is uh, quite uh, complex. All are nothing but manifestations of your energy. Indeed, since the energy and energetic are identical, all of them are but manifestations of you. So this is amazing uh, realization by Pranath uh, Maharaj. The Supreme Person regarded as a super soul within the core of everyone's heart gives inspiration for action according to one's mentality. <clears throat> so he doesn't try to control us. We are given what whatever our desires are, the Lord inspires us to you know whether the good desires or bad desires, God doesn't stop us. So it's you know it's, we can't blame God for doing good and bad when we're doing good and bad because He's there to just fulfill our desires. You want to do good, He'll help you to do good. If you want to do bad, you want to murder somebody, rob a bank, <laughs> He will even give you the intelligence to do that as well. So it's, we have a choice, it's up to us. You know, we, he doesn't control us like that. We can choose, but then we pay the consequences as well. This is the thing. So all of these mentalities are mainly facilities given by Krishna to the person acting. Bhagavad Gita therefore says, Matha Smriti Gyanam Apanam Cha. Everyone works according to the inspiration given by Super Soul because everyone has a different goal of life. Everyone acts differently as guided by the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So, Krishna, the Lord gives us Gyanam Apanam, Smriti, Remembrance, Gyanam Apanam and Forgetfulness. So, sometimes we say, oh, I, I forgot this. Well, the Lord controls our remembrance, our uh, our forgetfulness. But the, that, that's, that is not correct. The, the, we can't 
take that as an excuse uh, because that, that that's not what this uh, verse in Bhagavad Gita in chapter 15 is talking about that God is forgetfulness and God is remembrance that it just means that he is the inspirer he reminds us of things you know the desires that we have from previous lives he reminds us to, you know oh by the way you wanted to do this now here you have another body if you want to continue it now you have a you have a chance that's that's the remembrance and forgetfulness we forget our previous body and our previous life our previous relationships otherwise it would be absolute chaos if you remembered everything so it's like that so O oh Lord O oh Supreme Eternal by expanding your plenary portion you have created the subtle bodies of the living entities through the agency of your external energy which is agitated by time thus the mind entraps the living entity in unlimited varieties of desires to be fulfilled by the Vedic directions of Karma Kant and the 16 elements who can get free from this entanglement unless he takes shelter at your lotus feet so the living entity wants to enjoy the material energy and to give the living entity all facility Krishna the supreme personality of God had created this material world and gave the living entity the facility to concoct different ideas and plans through the mind which we do and these facilities offered by the Lord to the living entity constitute the 16 kinds of perverted sport in terms of the knowledge gathering senses five the working senses five and uh, the mind and the five material elements that we are made from so the 16 uh, items um, that give us sport to do our actions <clears throat> the wheel of repeated birth and death is created by the supreme personality of Godhead but to direct the bewildered living entity in progress towards liberation according to various stages of advancement different directions are given in the Vedas so the, we have to consult the Shastras thus Lord Narasimha Dev was pacified by the devotee Palama so after he given his prayers I think the prayers go on a bit longer but we don't have time to go through the whole thing but we get the idea what uh, Palad Maharaj was saying so the Lord Narasimha Dev was pacified by the devotee Palad with prayers offered from the transcendental platform the Lord gave up his anger and being very kind to Palad who was offering prostrated obeisances Jai. so that is uh, our Mahajan Parlahat Maharaj so this is the this is the prayers and uh, so nice it's amazing that uh, even a five-year-old like Dhruv and Palat they can give such wonderful prayers just be, when, once they get the mercy of the Lord I mean we, we can get Krishna doesn't necessarily have to come and touch your head but we get mercy as well as, as we surrender to him he will give us more of mercy and we can you know what we say we can say with conviction will start making more sense when we speak and whatever we say will have you know a bit more weight substance but that obviously takes time as we surrender as we gather more knowledge then Krishna blesses us to share that knowledge with others so thank you also very much for listening and thank you all for joining Jai Prabhu Madhav Shamsundar Prabhu Partha Prabhu Parveen Mataji Prem Prakash Prabhu Sarvesha Mataji Venkat Prabhu not I'm not sure what's happened to Rukmini Mataji. I maybe should find out today. Uh, I hope she's okay. And uh, Prabhu Mataji, who's on the iPhone, welcome. So thank you so much. Uh, let's have a little discussion on this. Uh, we'll start from the top. Uh, Jay Prabhu. Hari Bhu Prabhu. Yeah, Hare Krishna. Um, yes, yeah, so. Um, uh, as you know, uh, this is related to the Hindu festival of Holi, which is in about a couple of weeks, isn't it? I think, yes. Um, yeah. We, um, so, yeah, they, uh, Prahlad Maharaj, uh, he's tried to pacif pacify uh, Lord Nishima after, you know, the demigods have tried and failed. And so these these prayers he offers with uh, love and humility. And, you know, uh, again, like all the other all the, other prayers we've heard, you know, there um, is um, a lot of wisdom and the uh, 
praising of the Lord and glorifying of the Lord. Um, so um, I'll just go through a few points, a few key points I've picked up. So um, um, only by devotional service can the Lord be satisfied. And now, um, so, um, uh, a devotee will de dedicate everything, everything to the Lord. This includes his mind, his words, uh, activities, wealth, and life. Um, the Lord does not need anything from anyone. So when we make an offering to the Lord, it's actually for our own benefit. Our own benefit. So in, in this material world, every living entity is you know, looking for happiness, but they're looking at, in the wrong place. They're trying to please the, their own senses rather than the Lord. So, um, yeah, so the mind, the mind can be uh, purified purified by chanting the Hare Krishna mantra and you know, glorifying the Lord and giving his glories and offering prayers. Um, I'll get go to the um at the end of the prayers. Um I think Lord Narsimha is pleased is pleased with pleased with um Prahlad and you know if you if you want any better addictions and all that he asked him but so um he Lord what Narsimha, Lord Narsimha says that um, uh, one can only understand him if, if you know, if one pleases him. So the question is, how we, how do we please him? And I think a simple way to please him is in I think nine point two six of the Bhagavad Gita. If one of us me with love and devotion, leaf, flower, fruit, or water, obviously devotion for service pleases him as well. Yeah, so that's that's it. Yeah. Um. I did want to have one question. Um, I mean, can I say like, because, you know, you know, um, the, the Lord Nashimatri is sung after every Sunday sang and all. Um, why is that no, Lord Nashimatri uh, sung rather than, the, you know, the Vishnu Arti? Oh. I'm sure everybody else knows. I mean, I, I don't know. Okay. Yeah. I mean, this is the form. This is a, the protection form of the Lord, as he says, uh, in, you know, so when, when, uh, when the Lord came, when Prahlad Maharaj was calling for the Lord, or he says, uh, uh, Hiranyakashipu, his father said, so is your Lord in, in this pillar? But I don't think Prahlad Maharaj knew that he was in the form of Narsingha Dev. But then that, that, that Narsingha Dev was, had to come as Narsingha Dev as well because of the boon that uh, Hiranyakashipu had as well. And uh, it was a fearsome sight. So, in the in the Narsima Kavacham or Narsima Pray is now he, he he comes as a, as a fear to the enemy, you know, to the demons. As is, we were saying in this prayer, that he is to put fear into the demons. So he comes in a fearsome state. So he gives protection to his devotees. So for protection, uh, the Shastras recommend that we remember Narsima Dev. Just like normally we we used to do Hanuman Chalisa for protection. So that, that that's that's the protection uh, incarnation of uh, of the Lord. So we, we remember him in in that in that mood, so to speak. I mean, nursing there is there's a ugar mood as well, but you have to be careful with that. You know, when like when he's in his angry state, sometimes I think you have like a big problem. Then you remember him in that ugar state, but that that in that state he's, he's in a very angry mood. So it's, I think it's all about the mood, what, what mood they're in and uh, what they're portraying in that mood. And in, the, in this mood, they is portraying, portraying protection. So we remember him in this mood. Okay, Does this make sense, Prabhu? So, yeah. It's just like in all the other temples, you know, they sing the Vishnu Arti Om Jai Jagadish Ravai, so it's always asking. In, in the other, other temple, I mean, like normal temple, no, it's con temples, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that that arti, Om Jai Jagdish Hare, it's for the general masses, so it's something that everybody can understand. So, just trying to remember who who actually made that. Can you remember the name of the? Yeah, there's some. I can't remember the name right now. That that arti is for the like for everyone, for for, for the Vaishnavas, uh, is recommended is the nursing arti. I mean, they also sing. Uh, uh, Hanuman Chalisa as well, 
on Tuesdays, don't they? And that that's the protection. Yeah, yeah, sure, yeah. Yeah. So it's it's the protection art, you could say. And it protects your bhakti, protects everything, your health and your bhakti, your family, you know, protect everything. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Partha Prabhu? Hare Krishna Prabhu, no points actually, it's very nice. Thank you, thank you. Okay. Uh, who we got? Uh, Sureshi Mataji? Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Uh, Krishna is very kind. He gives knowledge from within and without. Within super soul and without from the Shastras and from spiritual master. And Narad Muni was spiritual master of uh, Prahlad Maharaj. When Prahlad Maharaj was in the womb of his mother Kayadu, Narad Muni gave all devotional service. That's why he was qualified as a devotee. And qualifications of a devotee is not counted by the age, but by his devotion. Like uh, um, Prahlad Maharaj was very young, but uh, when uh, Arshin Deva was very furious, nobody could go ne near him, even Brahma and Lakshmi Mata couldn't go near him. So they know that um, uh, Prahlad Maharaj is more qualified in devotion, although he was younger. So they asked him to go and pacify Lakshmi Deva. And um, Prahlad Maharaj was very selfless person. He wanted everybody want to become Krishna conscious. So he was very concerned about his classmates and everybody. So he was, that's why he was teaching Krishna conscious. And the Chaitanya Mahaprabhu says that if you, you were born even in a Nava family, like Prahlad Maharaj was born in a demon family. But if you are called Krishna conscious, you can become a spiritual master. You are qualified to become a um, spiritual master. And though Prahlad Maharaj was very young, he was all well qualified with Krishna courses, just like um, same like uh, Sukhdev Goswami. He was very young when he recited Bhagavatam and there were so many devotees much older than him. But because he was qualified, he was Krishna conscious. It doesn't matter about the age, it's about the qualification of devotion. So Prahlad Maharaj, he was a very nice spiritual master. He knew about Krishna. He wanted everybody to go to Krishna. That's why he was preaching. He, he didn't, he, he was fearless about his father. He didn't come um, bother or that he would be killed or anything happened. He, knew, he had faith that Krishna is, will, protect, will protect him. He surrendered, full surrender to Krishna. So that's why he was very, very fearless. And we have to be fearless as well if you become Krishna conscious. Hare Krishna. Jai. Thank you, Mataji. Thank you so much. Uh, Prem Prakash Prabhu? Would you like to add anything? Hey. You able to hear me? Yeah. Yeah, so obviously we all are here because uh, it's Prahlad Maharaj who showed us path of bhakti and given us instruction. Uh, and basically those instructions are what we are trying to follow uh, to be in Krishna consciousness. That's uh, something which we all need to acknowledge. And thank you so much to understand this. Also, uh, all everyone when tried to pacify Lord Nasimha Deva, it was it is quite understanding that they they try to see the form of Lord Nasimha Deva. But when Prahlad Maharaj was going, his eyes were his mind was just focused on Lord Nasimha Deva's feet. So uh, the lotus feet of Lord Nasimha Deva was sweet uh, when he was uh, going. So he was as a uh, somnia means uh, very very uh, very subtle very beautiful 
and he was focusing on them when he approached Lord Nasimha Deva. He was not looking anywhere beyond, obviously. And then he was, uh, then he he was able to approach Lord Nasimha Deva. Obviously, Lord Nasimha Deva was merciful to him. But what we need to understand that we need to focus and develop our love for lotus feet of lo- of the Lord, and that's our shelter. So that's what I would like to see. Well, all of us, first thing we'll do, go to temple. Our Krishna is looking so beautiful. How? Because his face is looking beautiful. His ornaments he's wearing, uh, everything is looking beautiful. But as for Sastric instructions, first thing is that we should be looking at his feet and then appreciating it and then try to look further as we go up. So, uh, so Lotus Feet is our shelter. <laughs> How you go? Yeah, yes, wonderful, wonderful. Thank you. Parveen Mataji. Hare Krishna, yes. Very beautiful point reminded by Prakash Prabhuji. Yeah, because that's what I do. I'll go and see, oh my God, how beautiful. Then I, oh, no, 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 I have to look at the feet first. Yeah. So uh, I do that mistake as well. And beautifully explained all the points. So the realization is devotional service is the only means for us, for a conditioned soul, to find, like you said, all the, you know, s- solutions. So we just have to accept that the mercy that Krishna has been very merciful to give us this chance to be to engage in devotional service and uh, Jay Prabhu asked about the art the uh, I think I read somewhere that uh, when in the early days uh, Prabhupada when they were establishing temples and they were attacked and the the life was at danger of the devotees and then Srila Prabhupada said that Yes, we are going to do Narsimarti for our protection from now on. So I, I think I read it somewhere. Yeah, I think you're so, right. Yeah. Yeah. I think you're right. yeah, because we, because my husband had that thing as well in his head. So why did do Narsimarti? You know, because there are so many different incarnations. Mm. Why that? So we understand it's for protection. Mm. But then I think I Googled and I, I read that somewhere. So yeah. <laughs> okay. Adi Krishna, yes. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. yeah. So it is the protection. Right? We need the protection. Yes, uh, protection. Yeah, both ways. Bhakti and like for the li- life of the devotees as well. So, yeah. 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 I mean, uh, yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Okay. We, also, we also worship uh, Tulsi, Tulsi Devi for protection of our bhakti as well. So, you know, we need all the help think we can get and uh, yeah i mean might say why we worship uh, tulsi devi well you know that's she's she's also bhakti devi and she helps us with our bhakti so basically end of the day we follow the instructions of shira Prabhupada, and shira Prabhupada follows the instructions of the display succession going all the way to lord chaitanya and and in fact going all the way to lord brahma so we we follow follow their, their uh, instructions that's what we do but yeah it's, it's still it's important to know why why we're we doing this as we saying last week that we, we shouldn't just follow something blindly we should inquire so we know what we're doing and why we're doing it and then learn how to do it so yeah thank you for very interesting questions and it's amazing uh, past time uh, Parlad Maharaj I mean you know uh, which he, he he wants to be a devotee and his father wants to be, wants to him to be a demon right so it's usually the other way around or oh, maybe sometimes uh, in uh, in a uh, in Vaishnavism as well you know sometimes if the, if the parents are not following say ch- you know they're not chanting they might say i mean not to this extreme you know they're not going to punish their child like palad poor palad was punished but parents do say sometimes you know why it's not your age you go out and enjoy so that's like another subtle form of uh, you know the parents saying to the child that, that don't 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 worship God, you know go and have some fun, enjoy yourself. Maybe, well, I mean they, they mean well because they don't want because they don't understand what uh, the child doing. They think he's just stuck in his room and he's lost his way or something, you know, and he's not doing normal things. So you know it's understandable, but in this case, you know, it was very extreme. That uh, uh, Palad wants to worship the Lord, and his father was prepared to kill him for doing that. And but yet Palad maintained strong in his endeavor, and then the Lord appeared 
and helped him and the, the Lord was very angry and he remained angry uh, the the Brahmaji and uh, the other uh, demigods uh, tried to pacify his anger saying look you know Hiranyakashipu is now dead please you know just be calm now but he refused to be calm because he, he wasn't just angry with the Hiranyakashipu the Lord was also angry with the demigods as well because Palad was tortured so much but yet nobody helped him nobody came to be rescued you know time only only Krishna's hand was there to protect him time and time again you know he was tested he was thrown he was put into hot oil his uh, aunt Holika sat with him and uh, tried to burn him you know he had and the elephants trample over him snakes poisonous snakes avoid him and yet no demigod came to rescue him. I think they, they were afraid of Hinakashipu nobody tried to help him so um, Lord Narasimha was very angry at the time he didn't want to know and then you know the demigods always appear to apologize and then you know everything is all right so thank you all so much we'll do a couple of rounds Hare Krishna, can Hare. I say something? Sure, uh, Ralad Maharaj was very dear to Lord Krishna. That's why in chapter 10, Krishna says, among the deities, I'm Prahlad Maharaj. Yeah. Very, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. So he, Krishna chooses the best of the best, isn't it? So he considers him, you know, most, uh, you know, ultimately the best uh, person for that. I mean, this is why he's one of the Mahajans as well, isn't it? You know, so yeah, he does have a very uh, high place in the eyes of Lord Krishna. So thank you so much. Uh, okay, we'll do a couple of rounds. Uh, Sarveshi Mataji, please, uh, if you can start and then Praveen Mataji, if you can do the second round, please. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Namah Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Pasaya Bhutale Sri Mati Bhakti Vedanta Swami Nitinamani Namaste, Saraswati Deva, Gaurabhana, Picharine, Nirvise, 